Hello, family, and welcome back to the Explore the Extraordinary podcast. My name is Betty, and today I'm joined by Billy. And Billy is a law of attraction coach. He's a near-death experiencer. I saw his testimony on YouTube, and I was totally blown away. And I feel like spirit led me to his story so that I could ask him to come on this podcast and share it with our community. So I'm so grateful for your willingness to serve the community at IONS, and I'm going to toss it right over to you to share about your experience. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me, Betty. I really appreciate um, this opportunity to do this with you and to share my story with everybody that's watching today. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, we have limited time, but in 2016, um, I started my day like any other day. However, it really wasn't going that well for me. Um, I had a lot of issues going on in my life at the time. And I'm just going to pause for one second because I've never once gotten through this story without getting choked up. So I'm, I'm going to try my best to do that today for you guys. But I had a lot of things going on and... Uh, my wife and I happened to be fighting that day and I was just, you know, it's, it's pretty typical. We all have things going on in our lives and sometimes we don't handle them, you know, the best that we would like to. So that day I was kind of fed up. I really didn't know what else to do. So I jumped on my Harley, my motorcycle, and I took off for the day. Um, just really trying to escape life's problems. And I went out and I did my thing throughout the day. And then after I kind of calmed down and settled down a little bit, I was on my way back home. And usually I wear um, sunglasses that cover the majority of my eyes. However, it was getting dark and I couldn't wear my sunglasses. So I was just wearing regular prescription glasses. They were a little smaller than actually what I'm wearing now. And so they didn't cover my whole entire eye that well. Now, if you ride motorcycles, eye protection is, is very, very important. And what happened was I was on a pretty desolate back road, um, Northeast Pennsylvania, a very rural, rural area. And from what I remember at the beginning is that a car was going by me and it had kicked up a rock and it actually hit me right in my eye, like right under my eyelid here and ripped it open. It was very painful. And when I did this, I kind of like let go of the handlebars and grabbed my eye and I was like, wow. And I went off the road and I'm going to try my best to describe this for you so I can really put you there in the situation. So I go off the road with my motorcycle. I can't really see out of this eye. And the motorcycle starts to kind of like fishtail in the gravel as I'm going forward. So I'm probably doing around 40, 45, which was the speed limit on the road. Um, instead of actually letting go of the motorcycle and, and just falling off of it, I tried to stay with it and I tried to save it. Um, this is a really good lesson in letting go because at that time I should have let go and I didn't. And what happened was the parts that hold on to the handlebars actually broke on me. And I had fallen over the gas tank of the motorcycle. At this point, everything really goes in slow motion. And I remember I looked up at the sky Notice the blue of the sky, notice the clouds, and everything went in really slow motion. And I said to myself, shit. And I just completely, I could feel my spirit literally just let go. Like, I just went into complete peace and just complete surrender is what I remember. Um, now, what happened as far as what the police say and the people that found me that reconstructed the accident, after I went into this slow motion peace mode, apparently the motorcycle had thrown me about 50 feet and I, have, I came down face first in a pile of rocks. Now, 
and wasn't wearing a helmet. I don't know if you can see here, this light's a little bright, but I have a scar that goes all the way back through here, um, completely crushed the left side of my face and split my skull completely open. I remember trying to um, get to my feet um, and I just wanted to go home because as I had stated earlier, earlier that day I'd gotten into a fight with my wife. And I gotta tell you, when you're in the situation that I was in and I really felt like it was the end for me. Like I really felt like I was going to die. Um, all that anger, all that hate, um, all your problems, it all, it all went away for me. Um, and all I wanted to do was look my wife in the eyes one more time and tell her that I loved her. That's all I wanted to do. And a car had been coming down the road, which is pretty rare considering where I was. And um, something, something had nudged them to stop. They just felt like something wasn't right. And it was a gentleman and he actually um, got out of his car because he didn't see something right away. He just had this really weird feeling. So he got out and he looked around and he saw a light shining through the kind of like the woods and the grass. And it just happened to be the brake light on my motorcycle. So he, you know, decided to keep looking. And that's when he came across me. Um, I was trying to stand up and I was holding the whole left side of my face together and telling him all I wanted was a ride home. Now, obviously that was not going to happen. I was in really, really, really bad shape. Now, EMT shows up and paramedics show up. Now, luckily for me, I was about maybe a quarter of a mile from the ambulance building, if that. So I had a lot of factors that were really in my favor at this time. And as I'm lying there on the ground, um, I, could, I knew something was going on because I wasn't feeling any pain. I was at complete peace and ease. And, and just a calmness that I've never experienced before. And the paramedic and the EMT were actually arguing whether or not I was breathing. And uh, the EMT had said to the paramedic, no, he's breathing. And I actually had given her a thumbs up. <laughs> and I actually talked to her later on after that, I got to meet her and talk to her. And she was like, that was really the highlight of my whole career as an EMT. She's like, you've given me that thumbs up after me saying that he's breathing. So after that, things got really, really, really interesting. Um, they end up medevacing me and they only gave me a 10% chance to live through the night. Now, my wife had to endure the, the cops showing up at her house and knocking on the door. And she was told that, you know, I probably wasn't going to make it. <sighs> Sorry, I, I apologize. This is a hard part for me as well. So they ended up actually driving her to the hospital. Um, they basically had given me my last rights. Um, and told her I probably wasn't gonna make it through the night. Um, the really cool part that happens um, for me is that I did live through the night. However, they had induced me into a coma for like six days. And in between there, um, really, really, 
cool stuff happened for me. Um, this is where I had my near death experience. And I, I didn't get a chance or I wasn't able to retain everything that transpired during this period of time. But the one thing I was left with was the feeling of just complete and absolute love. Okay. Everything else completely went away. And I could actually go back and forth. My spirit actually came back and forth between non-physical and physical. Okay. Which was really, really interesting because I could hear, you know, my wife talking to me, family and friends. And, you know, they were really worried and upset. And I wasn't because I was like, no, I'm actually really fine, guys. Like, I'm fine. I'm, I'm going to come back. And this is going to be amazing and really, really blow your mind. So that was um, what I experienced as far as, you know, my accident and um, my near death experience. And if you, Betty, if you'd like to, you know, jump in and ask me questions, because yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Part of that with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. I really could feel your emotions while you were sharing. So thank you for getting vulnerable and thank you for getting honest. And, you know, you said that your experience happened in 2016 right now it's 2024 because who knows when people will be watching this might be very far in the future, but you know, that's, that's not a lot of time to integrate something like almost dying. You know, it's a very life changing event. So you're doing great being able to articulate yourself. I want really? to talk a little bit about the after effects, if that's okay with you. Like, let's get into what happened after your experience. Um, did you start telling people right away about um, the spiritual experience? Were you too confused? Yeah, no, I absolutely didn't. Um, for the first um, few months, I only had like 40% vision in one eye. Um, actually, let me just rewind a little bit. I apologize. When I first woke up um, from my coma, they had no idea how I would be, how I'd respond, if I would be normal at all. And I woke up. And I was like, where's my wife? And how bad is my Harley? So I completely just, I shocked everybody. They were like, you know what happens? And I was completely like lucid and hundred percent fine in the aspect of, you know, what I retained um, mentally and all that stuff. The only thing I was left with was the physical condition. Um, the whole left side of my head was caved in and I couldn't see out of the side at all. And I only had like 40% vision in my right eye. So I didn't talk to anybody about um, what I experienced for, it took me years, it took me years to be able to come forward with what I actually experienced. And um, I've had a lot of help and guidance from other people that are familiar with near-death experiences, uh, mediumship and, um, you know, stuff related to spiritual growth and soul growth. Um, that really helped me shed light and clarify a lot of the um, confusion I had and also verify a lot of the stuff that I experienced. Thank you for sharing about that. I, I feel like one of the greatest tools for spiritual experiencers is other spiritual experiencers, which is why we create conscious space like this on this podcast where we come out and we get really raw and vulnerable and share about our spiritual experiences because we don't know who we're going to help. We might, you might be helping the next guy who doesn't know how to articulate his words like this. Um, I'm curious what happened with your relationships with family. You hear so many spiritual experiencers say that, you know, they come back kind of as this new person and things just really start to fall away. Friendships, uh, romantic relationships, uh, you know, even interactions with their children, like they feel like a different person. So what was your experience like with that? I'm really glad you brought that up because um, when you go through an experience like that and you get to see that um, life goes on, you get to see that 
you are a you know a soul in a human body and you get to feel that love and how profound that is and you also realize that you know your life could end at any minute so you have this appreciation and this love and you think because that you went through that and you come back that other people have this profound experience and that's not necessarily the truth. And it was a very hard truth for me to learn because here I am like, wow, I almost died. I, you know, I, I wasn't appreciating people and now I have this second chance and I just wanted to be able to live that to the best of my ability and express my love. And, um, you don't necessarily get that back from other people and you, and you can't comprehend it because you're like, well, you almost lost the son. Um, you almost lost a friend. You almost lost a spouse. Like, why aren't you more appreciative? And it was something I had to learn the hard way and, and start to understand that they didn't have the same profound experience I had. And it's not the same for everybody. So it's, it's very difficult to um, come back and uh, navigate that. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for sharing about that because it's so true. You know, like we can't make somebody else put on the magic glasses and say like, Hey, see the world through my eyes. It's so much prettier here. You know, like coming out of the cave and the allegory of the cave, Plato talked about it. It's been in so many different forms of philosophy for, for so many years that we can't, force it on somebody else you know i kind of yeah. want to yeah i want to shift gears. Oh, i'm sorry i was going to say you think everything's you think everything's going to be perfect and it's not <laughs> you still have life's challenges and it's in your face i like to call it resistance you know you still have your human problems and it you have to navigate that and that's kind of the beauty of like what this life is though you know, yeah, you get I, I think so too. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we can shift gears a little bit and talk about how you became a law of attraction coach. So what did you do in life before your experience and how did the shift into being a metaphysical teacher take place? Um, I've been a professional tattoo artist for over 20 years um, and I still continue to be a tattoo artist. Um, for many years after my accident. Um, how I first started getting into it is I was only able to really just sit on my couch. I could only listen to things. I couldn't like watch TV or anything for months. So I started listening to like motivational speakers and stuff of that nature. And it really helped me, um, you know, keep a positive mind and keep myself on track and motivate myself to, you know, pick myself up and keep going. And so that's kind of where it started. Um, the reason why I got into the law of attraction and why I love to teach it is because when I had my near death experience um, and I got to feel that love, I got to feel that, that frequency, that high vibration of love and understand that that's where we come from and that's what we return to and when I started practicing the law of attraction the big practice with that is raising your vibration and within doing that I realized that here on earth you can have that connection with source you can feel that love okay it's there for you all the time and you can tune into it and it's such a beautiful thing to, um, to feel that love and that security and that knowing. And to when you do that and you tune into it, you actually see the world through the eyes of source. And when you experience that, it is absolutely beautiful. And the reason why I wanted to start teaching it to other people is because I wanted them to experience it. I wanted them to know that you don't have to wait until you're dead to experience this love and to look at the world that way. You can have it right now. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. And that's why I like to teach it. 
That's beautiful. So you talked about raising your frequency. How can a person raise their frequency? How can we experience this kind of love? Well, I like to, well, it's the same thing as raising your emotions or raising like how you feel. My favorite practices, I like to start first thing in the morning and I go with just general good feeling thoughts and I work my way up from there. And once you start getting close um, to the higher frequencies, like you start feeling better, you start getting into, you know, love and appreciation, it'll actually suck you right into it. Like you'll go right into that higher frequency and you'll feel it right away. And it's really simple to do. You know, I like to do it um, walking on the treadmill or walking outside if that's an option. And I just walk and I start with a very general thought. It could be like, today's a very nice day. Um, the sun feels good on my face. I love the smell of the air. I love listening to the birds. And as you do this, it's going to, you're going to start to pick up momentum through the law of attraction and your mood is going to elevate and so is your vibration. Yeah, that seems like a very tangible tip, you know, like that's not anything that's super hard. That seems like something that's really tangible. And I always think of um, Peter Pan, right? They say like, if you think a happy thought, you can fly. And I, yeah, my, I've had the same kind of experience with manifesting. Do you yeah. have any stories of manifestation that you want to share with us? Like something that you called into your experience? <sighs> I've had so, so many, <laughs> but the most profound one. And the reason why I like to share this one is because it involved multiple different people. It involved a specific date and time and everything coming together in a culmination. So when you have that happen, the probability of that is, I, I don't even know what the probability would be, but it's gotta be completely high, but I used to um, date a girl many, many, many years ago. And I always thought about her and I was like, you know, I can't remember birthdays to save my life. I'm really horrible with birthdays, but I always remembered hers. And I had the thought one day, I was like, I would really like to run into her one day. And I wanted to be on her birthday. And I want to let, tell her happy birthday. And have her be like, wow, you remembered my birthday. Now, what are the odds of that happening? I haven't seen her in many, many, many years. One day I'm in a place and I'm getting my hair cut. I mean, not a place I typically go, just some random place. And she walks in, starts talking to me. And I realize it's her birthday. And I got to tell her happy birthday it completely manifested like stuff like that like what are the chances of that happening it's so specific but yet it happened that is incredible i love that that's amazing um okay so i i, I kind of want to stay on manifesting and then i have a couple more questions about the experience itself but what do you think about things that won't manifest do you feel like there's some sort of plan already at play like you only call certain things into your experience or yeah tell me your thoughts about when things don't manifest mm. well this is something because even though i'm a manifestation coach it doesn't mean i have everything figured out i don't think anybody does so it's actually something that i'm currently working on and from my current understanding it's really about what you have resistance to, okay? So money is a big one. You know, we all tend to have a lot of resistance for money or let me use winning the lottery as an example. When you think about winning the lottery, what comes to mind? The chances are pretty low. Not everybody wins the lottery. You have a lot of doubt, I call it resistance. So you have a lot of resistance in that thought. And that is actually what's holding you away from your manifestation. Now, if you could think of thought and have zero resistance to that thought, it will manifest very rapidly, very quickly. So my current understanding is it's about your resistance to it. Thank you for that. 
I needed to hear that. <laughs> so, um, okay, I want to I want to circle back to some of the experience a little bit. And I want to talk about the space that you were in when you said that you were in the induced coma and that you were able to travel back and forth between physical reality and eternity. And I want to know, like, were there, did you uh, encounter other beings? Were there guides for you? Can you talk a little bit more about that experience? Yes, there absolutely were. Um, I know my father who had transitioned was there with me. Um, he was actually there from the moment I I had my motorcycle accident. A really cool thing you need to know is that your your soul will leave your body before the traumatic incident. Okay, it has the ability to do that. Um, it can leave the body at any time, so you don't really experience the traumaticness of it. Um, the thing is, is that I didn't really get to retain all of like what I saw, where I was. Um, the energies that I encountered, the most profound thing that I can share with you was the knowing and the feeling. And I think I was able to retain that because they knew that would be the most important thing that I would be able to translate for you guys and to be able to share. Um, so that's why I think I didn't get to, to really bring back everything. But what I do remember is that I had a choice um, to come back or to not come back. And I was shown everything that I would gain in coming back. Um, and a big part of that was a second chance um, to look my wife in the eyes and tell her that I loved her again and to do things differently on that end. And, you know, to express my love to family and friends and to come on podcasts like this and share my experiences about um, the love that we all come from and return to. And I did make a promise that I, I would come back and do this to the best of my ability. And it's like I said earlier, you know, you're not gonna do it perfectly. I could sit here and talk about love all day long and you still got, you still got life that's happening all the time. So you're not gonna do it perfectly. Yeah, thanks for that reflection. I, I really identify with what you're saying. And I found that, you know, for me, different doors started to unlock to my experience, the more that I shared, and, and the more that I listened to other people share, and then like the door started to open like, oh, yeah, wow, I've never heard language for it before. But now I have language for what happened. So I appreciate you sharing all of that. And also, the idea that all that you really need to bring back is the love. And so like going off of that thought, um, you know, you get, you come up a lot, a lot, there's a lot of resistance against love um, mm. because people look at what's going on in the world around them and they say, well, there's no love here. Look at, look at the world. It's like, it's crazy. It's chaotic. So do you have any philosophical thoughts about why bad things happen or why we can't bring in that vibration of love to the collective itself? You, you really, it all comes down to you changing your perspective on things. Um, you know, as humans, we tend to look at the world around us very literally of good and bad. And it's none of that. And when you see things through the eyes of source, I want you to picture um, a seat that's further back. Okay. So the closer you are to something, you don't see everything. And that's kind of like where you are in life. You're real close up to it. So you don't see how it fits in and how it's okay. But when you step back from something, now you get to see a larger, the larger, broader picture of things. And if you could bring yourself to realize that everything in this life is just an experience. It's not good and it's not bad. It's just an experience. It's like a playground. Your soul comes here to experience things, to um come to your own conclusions, to come to your own preferences, to help you grow. And if everything was so perfect in this life, it wouldn't be interesting to our souls. It wouldn't be fun. And when you go back into that love, all those problems you've had, all that trauma you experienced, it all goes away. So if you could imagine all your pain and all your trauma and everything you experienced here going away, right? When you transition back into source what would you want to do you'd be like i want to do that again 
let me do that again. Like, give me another shot at this. Once you see the broader picture of it, changes everything. I love that so much. Yeah. And I'm still, you know, like I, I hear so many spiritual experiencers say the exact same thing that you just said, and you still see so many comments from people absolutely objecting to the idea of it. They're just like, absolutely will not accept it. May I add one thing too? <laughs> just because you understand this and you put it in the practice, that doesn't take away from the fact that things are very painful, <laughs> that you've had a traumatic experience and, and things do hurt here. And I don't want to take away from any of that with people because it, when you're going through something, it's it's hard, you know? And so when I when I speak of these things of changing your perception, like it's not about like faking anything. It is painful. Yeah, I think that's part of the human experience. You know, I mean, when you think about the space of eternity, there is no such thing as pain. And so it kind of sounds masochistic, but we do come here to experience a wide range of emotions. Uh, I'm wondering if there are moments in your life or if you can tangibly pick something out where, you know, like you have felt that's the love of source energy. Is it something that you're able to pull on often? Is it, has it happened in moments? Yeah, through the process that I shared with you previously, um, by raising your vibration, I could tune into it pretty much at will. The where to what starts to happen though is like the first few times you tune into it, it's it's very overwhelming. It's it's like a rush. Um, it's just like anything you experience for the first time that's new. The sensation is gonna be like through the roof. But the more you tune into it, the more your body gets used to that vibration. It's not as big of a rush. Okay. So I think what happens with a lot of people is that, you know, they, they start tuning in and they're like, they're blown away because of the feeling that they get that, that high, you know, and as they do it and they do it, they don't get that same rush. So they feel like they're not tuning in. Uh, so it's something that's, that I wanted to share that I thought was important because that's been my experience, but you can tune in the source anytime you want at will. I love that. You just gave me a key piece of information that I needed for myself because after my experience, I would get like these, these moments of just complete overwhelm where I was back in the light and I was sobbing and so grateful. And it was, it was like having another mini experience. And then, you know, now it's just like, connection to other people. And it does feel very regular. It just feels like a regular vibration in my life. It's not so contrasted. So that just closed the loop for me. Good. Thank you so much for that information. So what is uh, some other, like, what are some of the other spiritual teachings that you feel really called to share about? I just kind of want to give you some space. Like, what are some of your tangents that you go off on people when it comes to spirituality or the law of attraction? Um, I really don't go off on tangents too much or really try to push anything onto anybody um, because they have to be in the right place to experience any of it and you can't force it on anybody. Um, but the major thing that I really, really want to get across, I guess the message you would say is that you're always connected to source. It's just a matter of like, what degree are you allowing that connection? But that, you know, that love and that joy and that appreciation, it's available to you at all times. Source is always there. It's like a, it's like a stream, okay? And it's flowing to you and through you. I hear a lot of people say, um, and I understand why they say this, but they'll say, Everything you need is contained within you. That's not been my experience. My experience is that it's constantly flowing. It's like a, like a stream, constantly flowing. And you're either in it or you're out of it. So um, I feel like that's how everything, even love, especially true unconditional love, you tune into it. And it flows to you and through you because you can't share it unless you're tuned into it. So that's one of the major things that I, I really like to, you know, get across to people. 
I love that. Thank you so much. Thanks for your willingness to come on and get vulnerable and share about your experience and what you're doing with your life today. I think that it's super profound. It seems like a real 180 degree shift in awareness. And I think that that's always something so miraculous to witness and to be able to talk about. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share to feel more complete about our time together today? Yeah, um, that a, a change like I made is available to everybody. Okay, and you can do this through raising your vibration, through the practice of law of attraction, and anybody can change and they can be, have, and do whatever they want because of it. And just know that you're not going to do it perfectly right all the time. I love that. Yes, we are no more different than anybody else. We are all infinitely special and we all have access to this. So thank you so much for your willingness again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Babe.